Hello, so over the next 10 videos, I'm going to review some of the basics about reading EGs. This is part one of a series of 10 uh, lectures, each would span approximately 10 to 15 minutes. What I will do is try to highlight some of the physiological and pathological changes that you see on the EG. We will start with basically introducing the idea of where we place the electrodes and I will give you some idea about the different controls that are used in the software. Of course, uh, different uh, softwares will have different controls but it will just give you a sense of how EEGs are reviewed. So let's start from this very first page here. Uh, first thing you may want to identify, so once you've logged on and you've entered the software, you will have one of your technologists or one of your colleagues help you get onto the EG software. I'm presuming that this is your first rotation through the EEG lab and you're just trying to get a sense as sort of an intuition of what are the things that you need to look for. So if you look at, just go to the very left side of this page here and follow this cursor. The alphabets that end with an odd number are recording electrical activity from the left side of the brain. The channels that end with an even number are recording from electrical activity from the right side of the brain. And if you go to the last two channels on this recording, the at the very bottom of this screen, these are channels that end with the letters C, Z and P, Z. So these are channels that are recording activity from the midline. These green lines are separated by one second, so you have activity that is that occurs between that one second. These are the controls up here, so this is of, these are the different filters you can use. You can turn off the filter and you see that there is a lot of slow activity there. You can turn it to 1 hertz and some of the slow activity disappears. Likewise, this is a high frequency filter which is used to get rid of the higher frequencies. If I set it at 5 hertz, you see basically all the faster frequencies are gone. If I turn it off, all the fast frequencies are recorded and you see all the muscle artifact and the beta frequencies and normally we set this up at 70 Hertz. So the low frequency filter is typically send, set at 1 Hertz, high frequency at 70 Hertz. So this basically those are often the default uh, reviewing parameters. This is a notch filter. Notch filter basically gets rid of electrical artifacts. So if you have a, an artifact that's coming from the electrical outlet depending on what part of the world you live in. If you're in North America, you will be using a 60 Hertz notch filter to get rid of some of those artifacts. Sensitivity, basically what that means is you're looking at the gain of the EG uh, recording here. If I set the gain at one microvolts per millimeter, you will not be able to read anything because everything is overlapping. If I set it up at let's say 50 microvolts per millimeter, then basically don't see anything because all the amplitudes appear suppressed. A good sensitivity in adult patients is 7 microvolts per millimeter. If there is overlap between channels, you can adjust the gain, maybe go to 10 microvolts per meter or go to 15 microvolts per millimeter in younger individuals. So I'll set it back to 7 microvolts per millimeter. The time base is the time that is elapsed between the two green lines here. So if I, so right now it is set at 30 millimeters per second. If I make it 15 millimeters per second, the EG appears all compressed. If I set it up at 60 millimeters per second, basically you're able to visualize in more detail the frequencies between each one second. The default frequency that we typically use is 30 millimeters per second and that's what I'm going to set it up at. I'm not going to, this is, this icon here basically gives you the video for confidentiality reasons. I'm not going to display the video here. And this is, these are additional tools that are used for 
basically archiving the EG this one tool here so this is a magnifier if I select this let's say I want to look at a small segment of the EG so if I want to look over here I can expand it and then I'm just only looking at that and if I go want to go back to the default setting I'll just click over here and I'm back to the default setting here so that was a basic introduction of the different tools that are available on the software the labeling of the electrodes so the odd numbers are recording from the left side even numbers are recording from the right side and the alphabets here so FP is frontopolar so it is recording from the frontopolar area and since it ends with an odd number this is the left frontopolar area and likewise this would be the right frontopolar area T is temporal O is occipital so that gives you an idea of uh, where the EG activity is being recorded from. Like any neurological examination, when you're reviewing an EG, compare the left side of the brain to the right side. So as you proceed with reviewing the EG, you're basically comparing the two sides. So this is the left parasagittal, which is central parietal area. This is the right parasagittal area then you compare the left temporal with the right temporal. Something that really stands out on this EEG, if you look at these two channels, T3, T5, and T501, this is the slow activity. We call it slow because the number of waves per second are fewer as compared to the number of waves down here in the right temporal head region. I'm going, so you can see more of that slowing here and I will highlight that for you so you know what we are talking about and that slowing persists in the left temporal head region so right from the get-go you get an idea that basically there is something that is abnormal in the left temporal head region the abnormality does not have to be in the left temporal head region those electrodes are recording it sometimes depending on the electrical fields the abnormality can be more anterior or posterior but recording from the temporal head region. The scalp EG is more useful in lateralizing rather than precisely localizing. So you can be more comfortable that it is the left side of the brain which has some abnormality. You cannot really point your finger to the exact specific generator of that abnormality just from a scalp recording. So let me just move on. Let's just move on a little fast here and here with the slowing we also see a little sharp component here the montage that we are using montage is how the electrodes are arranged in relationship to each other so this kind of an arrangement where the input 2 of the first channel becomes input 1 of the second channel is typically referred to as a bipolar montage so on bipolar montage you're seeing a, a tiny sharp wave at T3, T5 and T501. To better resolve it you may want to change the montage so I'm going to go and change the montage to an average reference montage. When we go to the SNA that those are just my initials so don't worry about that this is just an average reference montage and the sharp waves gets a little more prominent at T3 and T5 when we change that montage and so we are just skimming through the through the EG it seems I've gone all the way to the end so we are I'm going to go one page at a time you see some sharp waves over here as well so sharp waves are quite clear now to better resolve it you may want to just use the high frequency filter here if I set it up at 30 the sharp wave becomes a little more prominent keep in mind that using a high frequency filter you can filter a muscle which may start looking like a spike so you have to be careful I'm going to skim through some of this EG a little faster the slowing is way more prominent. You can see the delta activity in the left temporal head region. These are 2 hertz delta activity. 
keep in mind that EEG is not just one frequency. There are many frequencies that you will see at the same time, but it is the frequency that stands out that's what we are talking about. So what stands out here is this delta activity, these slow waves that are occurring here. And as a comparison, you can compare it with the other side and you will get a better sense that this is asymmetric and this is abnormal. If you see a persistent delta activity in one area of the brain, you may want to consider getting an MRI of the brain to rule out a structural abnormality. CT scan will do if you do not have the resources, but an ideal test would be an MRI of the brain. With seizure protocol, when we say just any MRI may not be good enough, when we say seizure protocol, we specifically refer to coronal flare images through the hippocampus. I also like acquiring axial SWI images which help identify any old trauma, areas of bleeding, cavernous malformations, etc. So these sharp waves are quite clear and you are able to identify the sharp waves, you are able to identify the slowing. If you look at the Posterior dominant rhythm. Posterior dominant rhythm is rhythm that you see in the occipital parietal head region. So this is two seconds. You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hertz in O1, which is the left occipital head region. And on O2, it is not as prominent, but probably down the road, it will become more, more obvious at that time. So to conclude, I will, when reporting the CG, you will identify the clinical history on the report. You will mention the medications that the patient has been taking. In the description, you will say that there is a posterior dominant alpha rhythm of 9 hertz. If it changes with eye opening and closing, you will say that it is reactive to eye opening and closing. Uh, you should mention if the patient fell asleep or not, and if there was sleep, whether there was any asymmetry or abnormality. That is something that we will cover in some of the future lectures. You should also mention if there is any change with hyperventilation and photic stimulation, and then identify, then specifically mention the abnormalities that you see. So in this case, this is a, you see asymmetric slowing in delta and theta frequencies in the left temporal head region, and you also see sharp waves with the highest amplitudes at T3, T5 head region with an electrical field extending into the left frontal head region. In the At the end of the description, you should also mention the, about the heart rate. So in this case, the heart rate ranges from 75 to 80 beats per minute, and it is regular. Another sharp wave. So you can see a very nice juicy spike. I like calling these kind of spikes juicy spikes because these there is these are unequivocal and very clearly abnormal spikes in sharp wave activities. In your interpretation, you will say that this is an abnormal EG secondary to left temporal slowing and sharp waves. In your clinical correlation, you will say that these findings are suggestive of a focal disturbance of cerebral function in the left temporal head region with an increased risk of seizure onset from this location period. Correlation with neuroimaging is recommended period. This is the end of the first lecture of the series. I will see you in the next lecture and I will encourage you to share these lectures with your colleagues, your peers, and, and give me a thumbs up if you like the format. Thank you so much.